So many of the questions I ever get about online business are about email, how to do it the right way. And what I've come to realize is that all of the questions that I tend to get around email stem from a lack of understanding about what email is and what it's actually for. Now, if I can get you to understand like, what's the fundamental driver behind email, why it works, how it works, and why we should do it, then all these little questions about should I do this, should I do that, suddenly they answer themselves because you understand the fundamental reasons for doing this. This was driven home to me a few weeks ago when I was on a mastermind retreat with 19 creators. And we were talking about uh, the progress that they'd made since the year before when we, when we met um, at a similar event. And it was interesting because a number of people, it was like three, four people with, with sizable businesses, one of, their, one of the things that they were supposed to do uh, since the previous event was to create a welcome sequence. So when someone joins your site um, through an email opt-in, like what, what's the email, what are the emails they get after that? And sometimes it was a mix of people. Some, some people had these welcome sequences, some, some people didn't. But a whole bunch of people had written the welcome sequences, made a bunch of money from them, and then turned them off. And then, so the conversation started, well, why did you turn them off? And, and the answer was, well, because this and because of that. But at the root, what I could see immediately was, you don't really understand why you're using email. You're just using these automated sequences, whatever you want to call it welcome sequence, nurture sequence, because someone told you to, because you're following a formula from dot-com secrets, whatever it may be. So I want to talk through my personal approach to email, how I think about it. Uh, you know, email makes us millions and millions of dollars at story learning. It's, it, I mean, it's everything for what we do. And so I'm just going to try and talk through how I think about email. I've got no notes prepared. I'm going to, you're going to get pauses here, going to be slightly rambling. But for those of you who kind of stick with it, my hope is that by the end, uh, you're really going to, you're really going to understand at least how I think about email, how email marketing works for education businesses. And I'm also going to end with a very specific final framework for exactly what you should be putting in those emails. So stick around to the end for that. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Ollie Richards. I'm the founder of storylearning.com. I also write a newsletter for online business owners, which you can find at ollierichards.co. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video, turn on notifications. I have to say those three things. So just, just, just do it, okay? Because then we can move on. Um, so let's get started. So why do we use email? Okay. If you have a YouTube channel, if you have a podcast, if you have a blog, if you have social media, your fundamental challenge is that you have no way of communicating with your people outside of those channels. You could have 10 million subscribers on YouTube. There's no guarantee that if you publish a YouTube video tomorrow, it's going to get seen by um, the, check the mics on. There's no guarantee that it's going to get seen by the people that you actually want to see it, right? Um, same with Instagram, same with, pod, with, a, with a podcast, whatever. A lot of them will, but then if you open up a podcast, it's one in, a, in an entire podcast feed, YouTube, you've got adverts, you've got other videos competing for your attention all the time. The magic of email is that you control the cadence of communication. If you want to send a message to someone else's inbox, you can. And in that person's inbox is where all of their most important valued treasured communication happens. If you want to email your landlord, your mum, the bank, it happens in your email inbox. Okay. So the fundamental reason that we want to capture email is because we can control the communication that happens on a regular basis. Now, if you have an education business, what you should be doing is solving somebody's problem. The more pressing the problem, the better. And if you're solving somebody's problem, guess how often they would ideally like to hear from you? Every day is the answer. If, you're, if someone has a, a burning problem, like they really need to, um, they, they're studying for their grade eight piano exam and they just can't get the scales and arpeggios right, um, and, but you can publish piano videos that, um, that help them do that, cool. One video a week, amazing. But what's even better than that is an email every day that teaches them how to do it because their exam is coming up in two weeks. They absolutely need to, it's the only thing on their mind. If you've just broken up with your girlfriend and you are feeling all kinds of pain and sorrow, 
uh, you're thinking about it pretty much all day, every day. So is one video a week from that online dating coach enough? If you're learning a foreign language, you need help on a daily basis. So the reason we want to use email is because it allows us to keep in contact on a daily basis with our people. Lots of people send one email a week. Um, that's cool, I suppose, if you just want to keep in touch. But if you're trying to run a business, then essentially what you have to do is solve a burning problem. People who struggle with business often are not solving a burning problem. This is solving a problem of some kind. The more burning of a problem you're solving, the stronger and easier your business uh, is going to be. If you were selling, uh, if, you, if you were solving the problem of how to get hold of masks during the COVID uh, pandemic, for example, you were going to find it very easy to grow a business. And lots of people did grow massive businesses during COVID, probably unethically, but whatever, um, because there was a really burning problem. So we want to keep in touch with people and we want to do it regularly. That regularly thing is a mindset block that a lot of people still can't get over, but you know, get over it. You must, uh, if you want to, uh, if, you, if you want to really use email to your, to, to your, to your full advantage, but let's just drill, drill down on that. What are the advantages of sending emails daily? And even if it's not daily, even if it's like two, three times a week, why? If someone's got a burning problem and you're not solving it, they'll go somewhere else for their answer. I need to do um, some some aviation exams soon. I need to do my air law exam, and I'm finding it really hard. I've got this big, boring textbook. I just I, I just can't work through it. One day in the next few weeks, I am going to go and um, buy an online course that is going to help me pass my air law exam, simply because I need to pay someone some money to hold me accountable so that I will do it. If you're not, if you if you sell that stuff and you're not emailing me or making videos on it or whatever, I'm just going to go and buy from the person who does. The person who's in my inbox at the time when I need a solution is the person that I'm going to do business with. And you've got to remember, and this is especially relevant for those of you who are on the kind of creative side of the spectrum, where you care about your art and your art has intrinsic value and all of that. I know I came from that background. I come from a music background. I know what that means. You've got to remember that your YouTube channel about the saxophone is not a business. It only becomes a business when you're solving a burning problem. And that's your business. People pay you money in order to solve a problem. So there's a transition that has to happen from you teaching through generosity online because you love it to moving towards a business where you actually have to sell stuff uh, in order to uh, in order to make money. And the people who follow you because of all the great YouTube content you put out there typically are not the same people who are going to do business with you because they're a different kind of person, right? And often the people who follow you just because of your cool content will complain and criticize when you sell something. But you've got to decide what side of the fence you're on ultimately. And as soon as you move over to the dark side <laughs> or the correct side of the of the business uh, paradigm, uh, everything gets a lot easier after that. So you need to be solving a burning problem. You need to be remembered. There's a lot of content out there. And if you are emailing regularly, you are going to be remembered. All right. So we want to solve a burning problem. We want to be top of mind. We also want to be an authority. Think of it like this. If you are emailing every day, you have to have something to say because you, you have to send interesting emails after all, right? If you're sending interesting emails every day, you're the person with an opinion that automatically puts you, uh, frames you as an authority in the mind of the reader, right? I, I notice this all the time when I get sucked into some YouTube algorithm. Um, you know, I've, uh, I, I, I've, I've gone down these 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 YouTube rabbit holes of uh, people like Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson and these guys who, you know, take them or leave them, but they are always there with an opinion when you want it. And YouTube will just keep serving it to you to the point where you click it, you don't even, not even interested, but it, because they're there, you'll, you'll kind of click them, you'll click on it. And so you are becoming top of mind, you're becoming an authority for better or for worse. Um, and you probably not solving a burning problem, but that's just because they're in the education news space, right? 
But if you can be that person um, and also solve the burning problem, then voila, you have a fantastic business, right? So we wanna be emailing every day. So, so now let's talk about how you do email. Most people I've noticed, when they set up a welcome sequence, these things like welcome sequence, nurture sequence, they're, they're used because it's like a way to get beginners to think about email, but really like there's no such thing as a welcome sequence or an email sequence or, or a nurture sequence. Like your lifetime of email is your nurture sequence. You're, you're nurturing, you're selling the whole time. So if you just think for a minute about how this works, you have email opt-in, that's the ugliest damn email opt-in box I've ever done. Oh my God, what a, what, a, what a disaster. You have an email opt-in box. Let's draw that properly. There we go. And then from that moment on, after they've joined your list, you're then sending them email. Okay. So far, so simple. When people talk about nurture sequences or welcome sequences, they're typically talking about the first sort of seven days. But I think the reason that people talk about seven days is honestly because they don't, they can't get people to write any more than that. It doesn't mean that there's something magical about seven days. In terms of sales, you're going to get people who buy on day three, people that buy on day one, people that buy on day 200. You're also going to get people who buy on the thank you page, you know, especially tripwire offers and things like that. People will buy at all points. It all depends on what scale of the burning problem uh, spectrum they're on, how much you are then perceived as an authority. All right. So let's get rid of this seven days notion and let's, let's kind of just think about what email is for in the round. What we want to do with email is continue the message and the education and the entertainment or whatever it is that you, that you do elsewhere all the time. So you want to be taking your, you want to be teaching stuff, you want to be entertaining, you want to be doing all the things that you're doing on your YouTube channel, on your podcast, whatever, but delivering it on a daily basis over email. Because this, in this way, you are keeping in touch. And it never ends. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to I'll kind of give you a free pass with you want to email once a week, twice a week, three times a week, or daily. The point is that when you start the communication by email, the intention the very firm intention here is to do it ad infinitum. You don't stop because it's the relationship that you're looking to continue. Fundamentally, with email, by sending email, we are looking to strengthen the relationship with the audience. This is the entire purpose of it, right? And then when you strengthen the relationship with the audience by solving their problems, by being an authority, by helping them out, when you strengthen the relationship, the natural consequence of that is that people will buy from you. And when you see people doing like these kind of big kind of discounts and deadlines and launches, honestly, it's just because they don't have a relationship that is strong enough to sell anyway. Now you can do both, absolutely. Um, but the most powerful email sequence doesn't really sell at all. In fact, in a lot of our emails that we do, like the only links we have to products are in the, are in the, are in the, are in the PS. You know, it's so email after email after email um, with a simple link in the PS. So you create, you're leaving breadcrumbs to allow the most interested people to follow those breadcrumbs and then buy. If your business has a clear positioning, has a strong USP, is what people want and are enticed by, they will do business. They, they will buy from you naturally. So we're looking, we're looking to strengthen the relationship, continue the relationship, and then leave breadcrumbs for people to go through and buy. Right? That is essentially the purpose of email. It never stops. That's why we do what we do with email. Right? So that's when, we, when people say, I've got a seven-day welcome sequence. Okay, and then what? Is that it? Relationship stops? The real value in your business is most likely in your email list. And the real value on your, of your email list, as the great Ben Settle says, is your relationship with... The, it's not even the people on the list. It's the, your relationship with people on your list. And that's why... The whole purpose of what we're trying to do here is to strengthen that relationship because when they trust you as an authority, anyway, you get the idea, right? So that's what we do. This is just like, this is just our, our basic MO. This is what we do day in, day out, month in, month out. But sometimes we will then um, want to sell stuff, right? And so the way that I look at it 
when I think about building out, so a typical email sequence, um, back-end email sequence that we have maybe three months long, right, of daily emails. That's emails every day for three months. Now, typical buyer psychology is such that some people will, again, if you have a well-positioned business with a clear USP, some people will want to buy from you straight away, and that's great. You've got two types of people, right? They'll buy straight away, let's call them immediate, or they'll buy of their own accord, and then they need deadlines. <laughs> and this is just human nature, right? People think that the problem with deadlines and the kind of launches and stuff is they come across as so, so salesy and sleazy, but human nature is such that you need urgency in order to move someone to action. Not because like you're, you're, you're tricking them into it in some way, but because if it's a, the bigger the decision, the more you have to think about it, balance it out. What we're trying to do with urgency and deadlines is simply say, right, but now's the time to make a decision. Either way is cool, but you've got to make a decision. And that's what we're trying to do is influence the decision-making process simply so that they don't go a year without benefiting from your product. Because if your stuff is good, you want to get it into the hands of people, and that's how you best serve them. And so by having urgency, by having deadlines of some kind, this actually is in your the right customer's best interests because they will learn and benefit from, from your stuff. I can't tell you how many times like, I've ummed and ahed over like, um, hiring a mentor or enrolling in, a, in a, an, an expensive program simply because I just didn't have the space to make a decision. And it was the deadline that made me simply realize, okay, calculation, oh yeah, I really need to do this, let's do it, bye. Okay, so that's what we're looking to do. So over the course of a few weeks, what I do is I use automated sequences to automate this process, right? So I, like I said, I typically have about three months of automated emails. I should have more, but you know, <laughs> like you, you do inevitably get diminishing returns after a while, um, but you know, if I if I could, I'd have a year, I'd have two years worth of this stuff. But you know, I, I found that you know, if, if the first six weeks tend to be, you know, you get the lion's share of the business that's there to be done. So the way that I tend to structure it is in a secret series uh, of loops, and so this will typically be content. And we'll come to what this content is in a minute, but it'll be content meaning just really damn good emails, uh, engaging, interesting, entertaining, um, while also including all the framework of things that you need to do in order to engineer a sale. And we'll get to that in a, in, in a minute. So this might be, um, this could be seven to 10 days. All right, so seven to 10 days of, of content. Uh, followed by an offer. And so we'll kind of intersperse or we'll alternate between content and offer. And typically the offer is a bit shorter, maybe four to five days. Again, it's a very straightforward offer with a deadline and it just carries on like this, right? So seven to 10 days of content, four to five days of an offer. And the idea here is basically that what you're seeing throughout this whole journey, week after week after week is just quality content, helping people, entertaining people, giving them cool stuff. And then on a fairly regular basis, we come in with an offer, but the offer's not high pressure. It's just saying, look, we've got this thing going on. Um, there's a deadline on Sunday. You can take it or leave it. And then what we tend to do with the offers is we're offering the same kind of thing, but we're approaching it from different angles, right? So this might be angle one, this might be angle two, this might be angle three, and the angle can be, I mean, Take your pick. This is how you structure the offer, right? So it could be um, just the main thing. The the first angle might be offer plus bonuses. The second thing might be offer plus plus payment plan. The third one might be offer plus um, uh, some some live stuff. I don't know. All right. So this is pretty much how it how it how it carries on. And uh, the reason that this works is because some people are ready to buy straight away. Other people simply need time. And the thing with an education business is that it's not everyone who, who, who is ready to engage with you right now. Okay. Take my, my aviation exams, for example, like I've been, I, 
Like I should have done the my, my air lawyer exam four, five, six months ago. I still haven't. Why? Because life, right? So uh, if you had been sort of peppering me with like buy now, buy now, buy now, like I might have done it begrudgingly, I suppose. But by sort of waiting and giving me quality content and then being there when I'm ready, then you have a much stronger relationship. Uh, you have a, a kind of happier customer as a result, and it's just a better way to do business. So um, the problem with so many people's sort of seven day welcome sequence, it's just like, hey, for seven days, and then buy now, and then nothing, brick wall. And that's just, it's just such a simplistic way of doing business. Instead, we want to just develop that relationship out, keep providing quality content, and then regularly add offers. Now in our case, what we do is because uh, at the time of recording, we have like 90 days of, of um, automated emails, what we tend to do then is that Let's call this um, let's call this front end. So these are like three months of automated emails. And during this time, we would give them a tag, and the tag would say not ready for broadcast. So during those three months, nobody on our list would get any broadcast emails. Right? They would get no no product launches, no newsletter, nothing. Why? Because our very best stuff is here. We've, we're already sending them our very best stuff. So there's really no need to send them anything else. Right? So for three months, they get our, they get our emails, and we'll call this our front-end sequence. Now, at the end of three months, what happens is, come on, that's more like it. What happens is this tag then gets removed. So we, we call it a not ready for broadcast tag. So they have a tag that's not ready for broadcast. Um, so then we would just exclude them from any broadcast emails. And then after three months, when they finish this front end sequence, they get the tag removed. And now they just get basically newsletter, weekly newsletter, um, product launches, promos, any old stuff, whatever we happen to be doing in the wider business. So any one time you've got this cohort of people that have just joined the list, they're gradually moving through, and then here you've got a bunch of people who are long-termers who are then getting um, you know, stuff that we do on a weekly basis. But again, I just wanna make the point that there's a transition here, and people, people here, any one point, are kind of, they're kind of mothballed. They're protected, they're not getting all of our um, they're not really getting up to date with anything, but again, it doesn't matter because this generates so much sales for so many sales for you. Okay. So that's kind of the structure of how it works. Now, what do you actually send in these content emails? Because if the purpose of um, email is to solve a burning problem, be top of mind, and then position yourself as an authority, what then? How do you do it? Like, what do you actually put in the emails? So the way that I like to do it is the, the, your basic framework here is send people your greatest hits content, right? So you can do multimedia, you can do text, you can do anything. If you've got videos that everyone loves from, from YouTube, send them to those videos. Uh, if you've got like real star podcast episodes, send them to those podcast episodes. Tell stories in your email, Andre Chaperon style over like five different, over five days. Like, it's like your DNA as a person, as a business, as a brand, send that stuff over, e over email. I, I remember when I put these together, I, I went back over like seven or eight years of emails and said, which emails really worked? Pulled them all together, organized them into loops, and then added some more stuff, right? Now, we don't just want to send cool emails. We also want to prepare people to make a purchase because... Sales and marketing should be, my, my whole approach to sales and marketing, and you would, if you've read my case study, you'll know all about this. Sales and marketing is embedded in absolutely everything you do, right? The words on your website, the content in your emails, the things you say in your YouTube video. Marketing and sales is, is ubiquitous. That is every, every contact point someone has with you, it is that. And that's what makes it so that by the time someone gets to the sales page, they, they don't even need to read it, they're already sold because they feel like they know you and what you're about. 
okay? So in the content that you send out over email, what you wanna do is make sure that you cover all of the key psychological things that will remove uh, hesitations or objections to actually doing business with you. Because they, they may love you as a, as a content creator, as a business or whatever, but if they've still got a, a big question in their mind, that is enough to, to, to block the sale, to stop it happening, okay? So what are the things that you want to pepper throughout your email? And this is, again, this should be in your content, in, your, in everything. You've got to find a way to kind of judiciously smuggle it in so that your audience gets the message, they receive the message that you're talking about, um, but not in a way that feels like, okay, here's sales pitch one and sales pitch two. It should be very, very organic. So what are those things? Well, these are some of the basic um, questions in sales. It's also what we use as a content framework in, in story learning, and we're, we're searching to always answer these questions. So, basic stuff here, guys, but <laughs> it's like it's often missing, right? So, what have you got? What is your product? Like, literally, what is it? Have you said clearly what you've got? Probably, I hope so. Why should I care? Why should I care? So, uh, you know, for example, um, in my business story learning, the reason people should care is because we have people coming to us to, to learn languages. Like, I've been trying to learn Spanish for 20 years. I've, I've had a 600 day streak on Duolingo. I've you know, attended countless classes. I still can't speak Spanish. And then we say, well, it's good that you're here because story learning is where you come when you've tried everything else and you're finally ready to learn. And that's because it works. And by the way, here are all the testimonials. All right? That's why you should care. This is different. This is not some silly app. This is serious learning material. That's why you should care. Right? How is it different? Um, if you can't answer this question in one sentence, you've got some serious homework to do. Okay? So again, um, in, in the case of story learning, it's that we teach languages through stories, not rules. That's it. That's how it's different. Of course, there's, there's more you can go into, but that basic um, that basic value proposition there is you've got to. It's so essential that you um, that you clearly define what that is. Right? How does it work? Now, this speaks to the logical side, right? People can love you. That's an emotional thing, but they also want to know how it works logically. So you've got to explain your method or system. So how does it work? Speaks to method or system. You've got to satisfy the logical part of the brain. Problem solution speaks to what the person is trying to solve. So if you've got a problem, i.e. e.g. you want to learn a language, then the solution is, in our case, story learning, and this is why. All right, so you want to be make, make, make sure this is clear. And remember, you can tell this in a story. So I told this story of like when I was uh, stuck on top of a mountain and the air was really thin and I couldn't breathe. Um, and so I was like too scared to go to sleep, so I picked up a Spanish book and started reading. That's how I discovered the power of stories. Um, that was, that, so, I, so it, it, what that does is it shows the problem is I can't speak Spanish. The solution is stories. But I tell that in a sort of uh, anecdote form or in a story form, right? You can make this very entertaining. Uh, it's, so the point is that we don't want this listed out like a sales page, you know, we want it done in cool ways, right? You can you can embed this in, in videos, you can talk about it in the intro to your podcast, whatever, there's a million ways of doing it. Logical urgency. Um, why now? Why should I buy now? You can deal with the urgency problem here with your offers, but ideally you can also talk about um, reasons why even if there's no deadline, reasons why you should you should uh, you should buy now, and often this will be this will be things like um, in, in a business education case, it might be things along the lines of you know, for every week that you don't take action, you're losing ten percent of revenue, potential revenue, whatever. Uh, in the case of languages, it could be you know, you know that learning Spanish will, will change your life, and so for every month that goes by without you learning it, it's a ticking clock, right? That hits home for people. What proof do you have? Testimonials, video testimonials, case studies, uh, quotes from people. You can never have enough of this. Are there others like me? This is a great one because people don't, no one wants to be 
the one idiot that falls for the scam. And everyone still seems to think that anyone who's selling anything online, it must be a scam. I still get people in, in buyer, buyer surveys uh, leave comments like, well, but I really thought it was a scam, only, but I'm glad I bought it. <laughs> it's like, I, mean, I know people scam online, but it's usually pretty damn obvious. Like, if I've got 10 years worth of YouTube videos, like two podcasts, two YouTube channels, and then I've got, you know, published books, and you still think it's a, like, that's a very elaborate scam, you know. Uh, it's a scam a long time, a long time in the making. And I'm, I'm, what am I trying to do, scam you out of $300? Yeah. People overuse that word. Anyway, no one wants to be the like the one idiot that falls for the scam. So show them that there are others like me. For very high ticket stuff, what we do is we actually put them in touch with someone who, with, with an alumni from, from the program so they can get, uh, um, you know, reassurance that way. And then very, very important, what should I do next? Um, every offer needs a call to action. Click here, fill out the form, submit your credit card details, um, call this number, whatever it may be. Right? So these are the things that you want to be peppering throughout your content so that you are, in all of the content that you send, you are teaching, you are entertaining, you are educating, I guess that's the same as teaching, isn't it? But it sounds, it sounds posher. So you're educating, you're, you're teaching, you're entertaining. You're doing all of the, which is what you do in your content, like naturally, right? If you're, if you, if you're good at making content. You, that's why people pay attention, because you're fun, you're interesting. But then in amongst all of this stuff, you are addressing all of these problems so that by the time someone reaches a sales page, they're like, sign me up, like I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, how did I do? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a psychology of email. Hopefully you can see from this that you're playing the long game, you're building relationships, you're creating pathways for sales to happen naturally and organically, um, whilst also bringing urgency to bear at appropriate intervals so that you can actually get people off the fence, time to make a decision and actually buying something. And I think if you understand that, then you understand email. At least that's that's how I think about email after after many years of after ten years of doing it after learning from greats like Ben Settle like uh, like Andre Chaperon um, to, to name two in particular who 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 are just who I've learned all of my email email chops from um, that's how I do things. If you'd like to find out more about this, you should visit ollierichards.co. I don't teach email specifically, um, but I do teach um, online business stuff i write about it with my my newsletter i also have a case study there it's 117 pages where i break down my entire online education business and how it works and it's not even a scam in fact it's completely free you just got to opt into the newsletter you'll get that case study um people really love it and um check out some of the past articles on the site that is email leave comments down below if this was useful for you please like the video um, a few things you could do to help me out. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment down below with one thing that you learned or any questions and I'll do my best to, to answer these. I hope that was useful for you guys and see you next time.